when I tell you guys get ready to listen to what this brother has to say, it will shock you. This is Ian Dunlap. This is the master investor. Uh, he has a large following on social media platforms. Uh, he is a Houston-based investor with one of the highest win percentages and success ratios in the country. Ian is also the founder of Red Panda Academy, an online investing academy providing market research and insights. So let me be clear. This has nothing to do about him being a businessman because from what I've seen on social media, the brother is doing very well. I think his estimated net worth is about $40 million. So he's obviously doing something right for himself. But what he's about to say during this interview is absolutely absurd. The YC, or I believe, where when there's the first group of like, Customers mm -hmm. or focused uh, students mm -hmm. are females. Women are better at most things. I I'm going to be real. Oh, my God. <laughs> and y'all going to say I'm caping. Clip this part in. <laughs> man, I'm not caping. Right. But most men are lazy. Did you hear him? He said, I'm not caping, but most men are lazy. Very key point. That's not the worst. Most men are lazy. Let's continue. Most men do enough just to finesse sex out of women. Mm. I got somebody, I'm cool. I was popular before Instagram and the internet. I don't need, but most women, when they actually get into a business, they're looking to do better for the community or their family. Most men are looking to buy Balenciaga and give three minutes a dick. What y'all think happened in the comment section? Do you think it was any black women that gave him pushback? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, they ate it up. They, they, they called this man a king. Yeah, you telling the truth. Hey, he not done. Let's 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 let him cook. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you gotta call nah, a spade a spade, man. Real. Like talk that's real. why, like. Even in the venture capital space, there's a reason why black women are getting more capital and Latin women are getting more capital than men. There's a reason why black women are getting more capital and Latin women are getting more capital than men. All right. There's the key point. And you know why I'm here. He said, and that's why black women are getting more capital and also Latin women are getting more capital as well in regards to their businesses. Remember what he just said. This is supposedly an educated brother in regards to investing. So I'm pretty sure he knows the statistics, but this is what these types of black men do. They lie to black women for a particular reason. And I'm going to show you why. Let's go. It's too much know. talk, too much finesse. Where's the actual product? Where's the MVP? Where's the improvements on the UI? Where's the improvement on the UX? What are you building that's actually going to build the GDP that's going to close the wealth gap? We don't need another T-shirt line. Truth is harsh, but it's needed. I can either tell you the truth now or be fake and just go poly with other people who don't look like us and go get it back. And some days I want to go do that. Tomorrow I may. <laughs> His overarching point was basically to say that black women are doing so much better in business that they gain more capital in regards to investing than black men. For him to say a statement like that, that most men are lazy, then we can assume that his primary audience is women, in particular, black women. He's a black man, so his pr primary audience is black women. Is that fair to say? If your audience, your primary audience was all men, then that would offend the men that you are providing services for. Am I correct on that, on my observation? So in order for you to say that, you're not worried about offending men. And before I even get into these stats, let me just say this to black women. I'm going to apologize in advance because y'all didn't ask for this statistical dump. This is not on you. I'm not doing this to try and shame you guys.
for no particular reason. It's just for the simple fact that we cannot have black men going on panels lying to y'all. Because you guys didn't ask for this. The only reason why I'm doing it is because I've seen too many black women in the comment section that failed to do their research to see what the truth is. So his primary point was that black women earn more capital than black men. And this is an investor. But before we get into the stats, I had to think, what would make a guy pander to his female audience, to his black female audience? And I started to do a little research, and I actually found out why. <laughs> the Red Panda Stock Club, $499 every month. So if you have an audience full of black women who are looking for ways to get rich quick, this is how you lock them in. This brother is charging $4.99 a month to get into his stock club. Do you think black women are in a position to afford this based off of them being the most impoverished and also only making $44,000 on average a year? Can black women afford this while leading in student loan debt? No. But the funny thing is, this is actually the lowest plan that you can buy from his stock club. This one is for $5,000. That's $2,500 a year. Can our women afford this? This is his stock market club. $10,000 for one year. And y'all gonna flip out when you see this one. The Alpha Blueprint. Valid for two years. $40,000 to be a part of his quote-unquote dream team. Wouldn't it be best if I just put this money into an EFT or something like that instead of giving it to some random man on social media? The only people that can afford prices like this are people who are rich and wealthy. And if your primary audience is black women because you're pandering to them, do you think that black women can afford this? No. And that's why you have men like him can go on platforms and say stuff like this because black women eat it up. And since black women are some of the main people that, that will buy certain courses and go to those women's empowerment meetings and pay top dollar for them because they're looking for get rich quick schemes because they believe them girlies that's selling y'all ebooks telling y'all how to become wig influencers and you need to do this this and this what you got to pay me to find out what this this and this is they're scamming you prices are a scam and you know what i can see why people think so because people buy into a lifestyle when you go to someone's page and they show you that they live in bed they show you cars um houses trips vacations whatever that's what most people buy into instead of learning about what this person has to offer you're buying into their lifestyle if you have a business and you're trying to scale it be careful with some of these courses you buy back in 2020 i paid like 99 dollars out of my stimmy check for this course this is the official business page on facebook but once you buy the course you get your links or whatever they show you how to set up shopify it's a very basic setup there's no customization whatsoever then they put you into a group now you think, okay, well, once I'm in this group, you know, I'm going to get all these other tips and tricks. No, it was just a bunch of other people who had bought the course that were confused as well. Then there came a point where they started peddling a VIP group where they told even more secrets. And it's like, what? We just saw a whole TikTok thread of black women complaining about the women's empowerment videos. What is the biggest scam? And they said women empowerment events that's being put on by wealthy mean girls. Oh my God, that hit me in a different place. Let me tell you why, because that's the truth. Guys, I'm so scared of those women that have empowerment breakfast for like $35. And the gift bag is always like a manifestation affirmation journal. I'm, just, I'm like so scared of them because they're like, sales people but they're like really mean in person and then they always talk about like bossing up and being a millionaire but like isn't this brunch the reason why you're a millionaire you know me your customer and the reason why they were complaining is because they paid all this money to sit in and all they heard was just be yourself just thrive to be better you doing great girl yeah and it didn't give them anything 
that was tangible to get them at a position that they're in because they couldn't afford it for one. And they thought that they was going to get on this panel or listen to this conference. And this woman was going to give them the game, become millionaires. No, Ian, I'm pretty sure he understands this. So he's just pandering to his primary audience. So that's why he did this. So now I, I get it. Right. But the funny thing is, this was crazy. Listen to the, uh, the refund policy. No refunds. <laughs> All sales are final. No refunds under any exceptions. If you pay for this service, you agree to these terms. Love you. <laughs> With a smiley face for your ass. <laughs> and this is not a course. We are here to invest in the best companies on the planet to become wealth and find other opportunities to become wealthy together. Love you. <laughs> hey, you ain't getting none of that money back. So if things go bad, it's cursed for you. <laughs> Yo, so shout out to him. So yeah, I had to understand what the hell was going on. But it's funny <laughs> that there are some uh, young ladies that are hip to what the hell is going on. And I know they have said some reckless stuff, but I've watched their podcast a couple times. Uh, Y'all ever heard of a podcast called Poor Minds? Two black women on there. They had an episode about is women's empowerment a scam? Listen to what they had to say about their fellow sisters. And this is what, guys, pay attention. This is why it's important to kind of listen in on what black women are saying on their own platforms. Because when they get on those panels with you all, they're not going to tell you all the truth. So that's why you got to kind of sneak in, you know, and listen to what they're saying about each other. Because I promise you this, every problem that black women say that they have with black men, they have the same problems with other black women. So I'm seeing a lot of videos of black women primarily that are talking about how the most problematic demographic on this app are black women. And I agree 10 toes down because I have been paying attention to how black women have been stabbing other black women in the back. Black women have been doxing other black women. Black women have been stealing the intellectual property of other black women. Black women have been plagiarizing other black women's work. Black women have caused people to resign from their jobs or deactivate their accounts. Black women have been murdering other black women out of pure jealousy. Black women are throwing their fellow black women under the bus for the validation of a man. I mean, the receipts is just a mile long in regards to as a black woman, I don't think I can trust a black woman. I've even been stabbed in the back and had tried and have had my business almost sabotaged by another black woman. So it seems like black women are entering into the phase of their hubris. I already have a healthy mistrust of people in general. But when I see that women are pretending to be your sister or trying to build community only to turn around and find what your weaknesses are, your vulnerabilities are to stab you in the back, it gives me pause. I've seen black women try to boycott black owned businesses, but in the same breath cry why there is no black representation. Black women flipping on black influencers because they're just too successful. This gives me pause because what you're not going to do is try to sabotage and destroy what I have worked really hard for, what I've sacrificed for because of your jealousy and your insecurities. Yeah, I've learned this. Listen to what they have to say about women's empowerment meetings. Not a lot of times. Let me not speak for all women. A lot of times it made me sad because it made me realize how much we take advantage of each other. Mm. Because the, I feel like women are very hungry. Like we want to get it. We going to go out there and do it. Like remember the statistic we talked about a long time ago. And it was like, um, the most educated, like demographic in America was black women. Like see, and that's one of those lies that continuously spread because they're, they're not doing the research. So they run with it. I, I swear to you, 
That train is never late. Every black female podcast that is with the sisterhood, they have quoted that statistic. Black women are the most educated. It's not true. Trying to go out there and get it. Mm -hmm. So for me to take advantage of that and be like selling a book that was like telling you, oh, you have to get a good camera. Oh, you have to um, interact with the people in your comments. Basic shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ba the super super basic stuff that in that everybody and everybody are like yeah if i want my content to get up i know i have to post more i know i have to have clear pictures i know i have to interact but like tell me like is there like something with the algorithm like break the shit fucking down mm -hmm. and tell me like whenever we first started podcasting like people ask me all the time oh how do you get ads and i tell people all the companies that we use when we first started mm -hmm. i'm like hey they may not pay you that much but guess what it's gonna be something to put in your pocket right i be telling people how to directly go to the money like if you have a question i'm telling you how to directly go so i'm thinking she gonna like be putting every time i bought like a book uh went to a brunch it's never like literally showing you directly how to get to the money it's just like oh stay confident be consistent stay strong it's like y'all are phonies that's some whole ass shit that's really some whole ass shit if you really, really think about it, bro, it's like, yeah, it's like a hustle. But at the same time, you know that people are desperate to make money and be rich. So it's like, as a black woman, how can you do that to other black women that are trying to get to where you are? What did I tell y'all? Even black women know this, but they have a hard time admitting this when there's black men around. So that's why it's important to listen to them on their own platforms. So everything that I just said in regards to women trying to find ways to get rich quick and they'll be able to pay, they'll pay money to go to these empowerment meetings or get into like an Ian Dunlap's investment group when they know they don't have the money. And then when things go bad, now it's a problem. They'll only speak about it when they're on their own platforms, because I promise you this, if anybody runs a page, a panel show, and you get black women to acknowledge this, they won't. I, so that's why I encourage you guys, you don't have to go on there and be fighting with these women in the comment section on their platform because you're going to lose every time. Just listen. That's all you need to do. So yeah, so the, even these women know that black women are very vulnerable. And I think guys like Ian Dunlap, he understands this. He understands that a lot of our women are in dire straits. They need help. And that's why we need to have these conversations in good faith to alert black women. Hey, man, this is where you guys stand in regards to finance, because if you keep telling them that they're doing so much better than black men, then they have no they have no reason to improve. Why would they? If everybody is around you is telling you that you're fine, you're perfect, you're doing better than your male counterparts. Why would you go out there? and look for the statistics that tell you otherwise. They don't have a reason to. And while they're not looking at the statistics, they're gonna continuously fall in regards to the economy and finances. And we've seen this gradually. That 2030 McKinsey report, I've been doing multiple live streams trying to explain to black women, they highlighted you all in that report for a reason because y'all need the most help. And I've been trying to help put out the statistics, give you the facts and the solutions, but it seems like it goes in one ear and out the other. And also, I'm not done with Ian because he said that black women garnered the most capital in regards to businesses and black, black businesses in general. Let's see if that's true or not. 2024 just came out. Who are black business owners? They're more likely to be men than women. Some 53% of black-owned firms in 2021 had men as the majority owners, while 39% had women as the majority owners. Another 8% had equal male-female ownership. So that right there clears up any misconceptions that black women own more businesses than black men. He's talking about capital, right? What percentage of venture capital goes to women of color? According to PitchBook, you guys can look this up. This is a reputable source. In 2022, only 2.1% of the total capital invested in the venture-backed startups went to women. 
That's not black women. That's just women. 2.1%. The statistics become even more dismal for women founders of color. Crunchbase states that companies led by black women typically receive less than 1% of all venture capital investment. So if you have 100% and your group is only receiving 1% of that capital, Ian, why would you say that? I, <laughs> I had to stop. Why would you tell black women that? Yeah, because you got to get that money. You know, get those subscriptions up. These types of dudes are the worst type of black men, bro. Because y'all have no problem with lying to black women in order to get ahead financially. That's a damn shame. Let's continue. We're not done. This decline is particularly concerning for black women entrepreneurs who often receive a disproportionately small share of venture capital funding. In 2021, black women startup founders received just 0.34% of the total venture capital spent in the U.S. 0.34%. And Ian, you're an investor, and you will sit there and lie to black women like this? The nerve of you, brother. So this is actually how much money was allotted to the black community in regards to funding. In 2021, all the years add up. In 2021, we were given $1.8 billion. Now, we're going to do some uh, some quick math here in a second. $1.8 billion was allotted to the black community in regards to their companies, our U.S. companies. Black women still receive tiny fraction of venture capital dollars despite five-year high. I'm going to make this a little bit wider so you guys can see it, so you won't think I'm, I'm making this up. What does that say? With nearly... 500 million invested so far in 2021. Venture funding to U.S. startups led by black women is on track to outpace the five years. I just told you that in 2021, the black community was allotted $1.8 billion for their businesses, but black women only received about 500 million. Who the hell do y'all think the rest of the money went to? <laughs> Let me explain some. If we got 1.8 billion in 2021, 500 million went to black women. Black men, you could approximately say that 1.3 billion went to black male led businesses. However, I don't want to I don't want to factor out the businesses that are co-owned by black men and black women. So since there's 8% of those businesses owned by black black men and black women, I'll go ahead and remove that percentage to account for that. So that's 8% of black businesses that had joint ownership. So let's say that the same percentage was removed from the remaining 1.3 billion. So that would be $104 million. That would leave black men owned businesses at 1,196,000 million dollars allotted to black male owned businesses. So there you have it, guys. He was lying and he did it straight to black women's face with no remorse, no regard for their financial safety. Because if you say that, then they're not going to change. It's actually 494 million. So they just rounded up with the 500 million and that's perfectly fine. That's cool but it's 494 million. But it should be noted that an increase in funding to black entrepreneurs coincides with an increase in venture funding in general. The dollar amount of funding to black founders is up, but still only represents just 1.2% of the record 147 billion in venture capital invested in US startups through the first half of this year. So again, the black community still comes in last. So that's why I don't understand why men like Ian and black women like to compete. 
because we're still at the bottom. If we're only still receiving 1.8 billion at the half year mark, and it was 147 billion allotted, where the hell you think all that extra money went to? White folks, because they own the most businesses. White folks, Hispanics, and Asians. So yes, we're still at the bottom. We don't have room to be sitting there telling these lies to each other, man. And I don't know why these dudes don't understand that. Money hungry. You sitting there siphoning money from black women when you know they can't afford it. And they don't care because it makes them feel good. I'm doing better than black men and that's all that matters. So now let me struggle to pay my light bill. That's what's happening. There and again, let me apologize to the black women who had no parts in trying to champion this false information by Ian. But I have to do this to level set the conversation because I can't have black women going out there thinking that they're doing so much better and that and that makes you stay stagnant because you don't think that you need to change. You do. There are so many initiatives that are trying to help black women progress in today's economy. One in particular that you guys are all familiar with, I'm pretty sure people talked about this. Black women cheered when they heard about this. The J.P. Uh, Morgan Chase, which committed $350 million to grow black, Latinx, and women-owned small businesses. So they're doing their level best to try and get black women on par with everyone else. And this is where the solution portion comes in. So that 350 million is that global commitment to reduce the barriers to capital access and grow thousands of additional underserved businesses. And they're doing that by providing, trying to provide low, low cost loans and equity investments. And they're also trying to implement policy solutions in their philanthropy work making philanthropic investments to build the capacity of diverse led nonprofits across the globe to more effectively support entrepreneurs and support the signature ascend program currently active in 13 cities these initiatives will help improve access to capital for black slash latinx women and other underserved entrepreneurs and address the racial wealth divide so i don't want black women to lead this live stream and assume that I'm just trying to put this information out there to be negative. No, it's always solutions involved. So if I'm going to present something that level sets the conversations, just know that there are people and businesses out there that are trying to help you guys moving forward. That's all I'm trying to say. Y'all got to lose, use a little bit more discernment about who you give, who you give your money to when it comes to these investment companies or investment groups and also these women's empowerment meetings because they're trying to bleed y'all out of money that you cannot afford to spend and i say that uh, in good faith because i look at the statistics all the time and i know it feels good to sit there and listen to both men and women say that you guys are doing you know the best you're the most educated you make more money than black men so on and so forth i know but at some point you have to look at your own situation and be like, damn, I know they're saying this, but why I don't see results? Why I don't see the black women that I know improving? And I'm not talking about the black women you view on social media that have babies by rappers and they can buy out the mall and shop and do all this foolery and have all these shoes, you know, custom made closets. That's not the black woman I'm referring to. I'm talking about the black woman you work with. Those are the women that need help, just like you, because black men need help as well. But it just so happens that black men out earn black women. $50,000 to $44,000. You guys can see this information on blackdemographics.com as reported by the Census Bureau, as reported by the bls.gov uh, uh, website. Don't listen to these guys that are just trying to get you to buy a course. And also do your research first. And once you start looking up all these YouTube videos and these reviews online, make an educated decision before you just have, you know, divvy out some money, $499 a month. And again, there's no shot to him. He's just doing what he got to do to become the millionaire that he is. But it, it's, it's, it's no honor in what he's doing to black women to say something like that. And I wouldn't advise 
any black man to rock with a black man that would do that to black women on a platform. It's sad. It's uncalled for. And how dare you, black man?